Okay guys, today we have another informative video for you. I just received into my shop for repair an LG 37 inch LCD set. The customer's complaint is that it's taking too long to turn on. He says that he would try it on in the morning so that he could watch the evening news. So I think this is going to be a, a capacitor failure inside the power supply. So we're just going to um, open this set up and uh, see what's going on in it. So of course the first thing we do is we have to take a base off it and then you can remove all the arrow mark screws around the back here and then the uh, then the back will come off. So we'll just remove the screws so that we can remove the back. And all the screws are marked with arrows, which makes removing the appropriate screws easy. I should point out that these two screws here are not marked with an arrow and they also need to come out. And of course if there's two screws that aren't marked with arrows you know that there's going to be more. We've got more screws here on the input output panel that also are not marked and this is not a separate panel this is actually part of the back. So there's three more screws that need to come out, four more screws that need to come out from the jack panel and out of the back to cover this off just like that. So looking in this TV, here's our layout. We've got our signal board. We've got our timing controller, our TCON board over here, and we have our power supply. In this power supply, one of these filter capacitors, or maybe more than one, is going to be blown. I can already see that there's four of them here that have raised tops. If you look down here, you can see a couple capacitors here that have obviously raised tops. These guys here, I should bring the camera in closer so that I can actually see the screen while I'm demonstrating this. So right out of the gate, before I even fire up my ESR meter, which I'm going to use. I know the problems on the power supply. I knew that before going into it just from the symptom. But I can see this capacitor here is going to raise top, as does this one, as does that one, and as does that one there. So these four capacitors here are probably all that is wrong with this television. So I'm going to pull the power supply board out so we can work on it outside of the set and uh, we'll get the ESR meter going. So I'm just going to pull the board out and we'll uh, get the ESR meter going. So the circuit board, power supply board on these things is held in place by just four screws. We have five connectors to disconnect. These connectors are all also, they're, they're marked, but they're keyed. They only go in to one place. So you don't have to worry about getting the connector in the wrong uh, plug because they all have a different number of uh, connections on them. So they're only going to plug into one plug. So we remove the screws from the circuit board. Just remove the connectors by squeezing the little, there's a little tab on the back here to squeeze the tab in and unplug the connectors. On these other two connectors on this board here, there is no tab. Now we're able to remove the circuit board. And get a closer look at this thing. So if we look at the capacitors in question you can see that the tops are kind of bulging. That's a dead giveaway that these capacitors have been over pressurized and have blown. And even this one over here looks like it may be on its way out too. So we're going to test them all with the ESR meter because there's no point in replacing one or two of them when there's other ones that are close to going. So we're going to get the ESR meter out and we're going to run some tests on these things and replace all the ones that are uh, bad or potentially going to go bad over the next uh, little while. So what is that might you ask? Well, I just went and raided the recycle bin of a shop that replaces every power supply on every piece of uh, electronics that goes through it whether it's bad or not 
the policy is the power supplies go into the recycle bin. And that's fine because what I'm looking for is electrolytic capacitors. These ones here. And chances are these are going to be just fine. We're going to test them. We're going to open these ones up. We're going to test them. If the ESR on them is anywhere questionable, they're not going to get reused. But if they test good, then I'm going to reuse them. Now, a lot of these came from um, different various electronics, modems, set-top boxes, etc., cable boxes, where the policy was the power supply never gets reused. Power supply goes into the scrap heap where it is uh, recycled. So we're going to recycle these for sure, but I'm going to grab any good components that are reusable off of these power supplies, and then they'll get returned back to the recycle bin. So um, that just saves me a trip in to uh, buy some parts, and uh, you know we're not going to have any issues with them because we are going to test them all first. But that's where my my part source is coming for for this one. I would imagine probably the easiest way to open one of these things up is with a hammer. Maybe not. There we go. Take care of it. There we go. So we open this one up. And we find that we have a smorgasbord of good components. This is what my little trip to the recycle bin has netted me. It's netted me one, two, three, four, five, six inverter power supplies. And pretty much all of them have got usable parts. Got these big filter capacitors here from the primary side. Okay, one was missing because it was already in pieces when I got it. I guess it was somebody threw it on the ground or smashed it or something before I got it. But because the big primary filter capacitors and I've got the secondary filter capacitors, these are the ones that I'm after on the secondary side. These are the ones we're going to check out and measure with the ESR meter. And I also got myself some nice power cords with connectors on the end. These always come in handy. These are a unique size. And then there's some just some standard size ones as well. But these always can come in handy. You know, you got something, you know, you got a piece of electronics that, uh, it has a connector on the end of it and say, you know, your cat chews up the cord. You know, or or your, your rabbit chews the cord. You never know when these low voltage cords come in handy. So I'm going to keep those. They're going to go into my, my wire bin here to be kept for a future project. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to strip all the components off of here that I feel that I'm going to be able to reuse and sort them. And then uh, what's not going to be usable is going to go back into the scrap bin. Anyway, we're going to strip all the caps off here and then we're going to measure them and see which ones I can use to fix the power supply in this TV, which is that board right there. So here we go. We're going to test these uh, caps out. I'm just going to zero out my ESR meter. These are 1000 microfarad rated at 25 volts. So 1,000 microfarad, 25 volts should be 0 0.08. And let's calibrate up my meter again here. My probes are kind of going bad. Oops. I got a bad. Um, have to buy myself some new scope or meter probes. 0 0.01, 0 0.03, and then a new cap should be 0.08 or, or, or lower. So these two capacitors here that I just pulled out of one of these uh, switching supplies here, nothing wrong with them. We'll do the same for the rest of them. They're all going to test good. And um, then we can get our parts to repair this set and get it out the door and get it back to its owner and uh, it won't cost me anything for parts. I got these out of the recycle bin the same place I found this roll of good old solder. Someone threw out 
a full roll of 6040 lead solder, same recycle bin. It's been like a little gold mine recently for finding stuff. So my my meter probe was broken, and I just kind of cut the uh, cut back the the insulation here so that I could get into it and resolder the wire back on. So now we're just going to take a little bit of heat shrink tubing, bring it up over the over the um, the part that I've cut away here to repair it, and put some heat shrink on there. That'll give me some strain relief and extend the life of this probe so I don't have to buy a new set quite so soon. So we're just gonna put our heat shrink tubing, shrink our heat shrink tubing down here and that should uh, make this meter probe good as new until it breaks again. There we go. Another part that we can uh, glean from these used power supplies is these big high voltage capacitors. 450 volts, 33 microfarads. Now one might wonder, what would you need a 450 volt capacitor for? Well, I also service vintage audio equipment that uses vacuum tubes. And vacuum tubes all have high voltage capacitors in them. Most vacuum tubes are operating in that 380 to 400 volt range. So, having some surplus um, high voltage capacitors also comes in very handy. Again, these parts here, they might not be expensive, but it's just the, the hassle of having to go and get them when needed. So, anytime I can get salvage parts, recycle parts that are in good shape, I'm going to do it. So now we've got a couple. I'm just continuing to remove and test these capacitors and uh, we'll be ready to start repairing this board here shortly. A word of warning, when working with a soldering iron, be careful. They do get hot. Now for the average person that might be uh, a big problem, but for me I've spent so many years in electronics I've burned my fingers more times than I can uh, than I can count, so it doesn't really hurt me, but uh, for the average person sticking your finger onto an 800 degree soldering iron, it's gonna hurt like an SOB. So be careful when you're working with hot irons. So out of the five power supplies that we salvage parts out of, this is what I ended up with. I ended up with six 1000 microfarad 25 volt high temperature, high frequency capacitors. They all measure very good. They actually measure better than a new capacitor, so there's nothing wrong with these. I got two 680 microfarad 25 volt high frequency high temperature capacitors and two 330 at 25 volts. I also got three 33 microfarad 450 volt high voltage capacitors and two 68 microfarad rated at 450 volts. These would be perfect for I'm going to hang on to these because I have a tube amp and one of these days I'm going to have to replace some caps in them. So I'm going to hang on to them to use in my old Macintosh when it needs service. So I think we got enough parts here to go ahead and repair this board. So that's what we're going to work on next. The first cap I'm going to pull from this board is a 680 microfarad and the top is bulging slightly. So we're going to measure this up. This one might measure okay, but I'm seeing the top is starting to bulge. So... Okay, it's measuring 0 0.04, and for a 680 at 25 volts, um, 0 0.08 would be considered a good reading, and this one's measuring 0 0.04, 0 0.03. So it's, it's measuring still good, but just the very fact that I can see the top on this thing here is starting to raise ever so slightly. I don't know if you can see it there or not, but because of that I'm going to change this one because I have one. I have a 680 here, so we're going to put this new 680 onto the board and uh, we'll start with this one. And then I got four 1000s over on here that I, I'm pretty sure are also bad, so we'll start out with the 680. Yes, this one does, is not as high. It's still 680 25 volts and it is a 105 degree capacitor so it's the same rating as the other ones just not quite as high form factors a little bit a little bit thicker in diameter but not quite as high and not quite as tall 
just because it's a different brand. So now we're just going to remove these bad caps here and I'm not even going to test them in circuit because just the very fact that the tops are all popped out on them they're going to be bad so I'm just going to pull them all out and we'll put the ESR meter on them as I take them out but normally if you're testing a capacitor in circuit you can just remove one side and measure it but uh, in this case these ones are pretty obvious that they're that they're shot just because the tops are all blown up on them so we're going to take these ones out and um, replace them or at least measure them once they're out of the circuit to um, accurately use an ESR tester you need to just disconnect one side you can actually test in circuit um, and it, you'll get a fairly accurate reading but to get the ultimate reading you've really got to take them out in order to measure them so here I've just removed two of these 1000 microfarad capacitors actually this one's a little bit bigger but uh, I've got some other ones here. We're going to measure these ones and see what uh, how these measure up on the ESR meter here. Uh, two ohms, definitely bad. This one here is measuring another is measuring two ohms. Another one that's definitely bad. So we're going to replace those, and. Um, and then we'll uh, go over to these other two over here, which are all to 1,000s. There's, there's three 1,000s and a 2,200. So I'm going to go grab a brand new 2,200 and we'll replace that. So just fit a couple of new caps into the board here. I'm just going to solder them down. the other ones that are bad over here these other ones here again have the uh, the tops are raised so we know that these ones are going to be bad we are going to test the other ones um, there's two others here we're going to actually there's more than two others but there's two other main filters in here that don't have the tops popped on them and we're going to test them while we're at it but uh, the ones that are obvious are they got to be replaced just because we know that these ones are gone so I've just removed two more of them here we'll zero out the meter again and we'll measure these guys and again actually that one doesn't measure too bad tops not blown as bad but it, this one's this one's actually testing 0.18 ohms still a little high though because um, it should be no more than 0 0.08 and it's 0 0.18 so it's bad it's bad it doesn't look to be as bad as the others and one and 0 0.10 and it's supposed to be 0 0.08 yeah this one's also very close again the the tops are kind of raised a bit on them but they're not they're bulging a bit but they're not um, they're not completely uh, uh, blown so here's a couple new capacitors well not new but you know what I mean. There are a couple of uh, caps that I just recently pulled out of a, of a power supply that was good. And uh, we'll put these ones in. There's one. You gotta make sure you get your polarity correct, right? When you're plugging in uh, capacitors, there's a positive and a negative. If you put them in backwards, you're gonna end up with lots of pretty blue smoke gray smoke and a lot of stink because uh, they will blow if you put them in backwards so we set these two caps in and now we're going to uh, resolder this if you're wondering what this thing in the background here is this is my three-quarter inch um, video tape recorder from the last video um, I'm waiting for a belt for it. That's why it's still in pieces. It's fixed. It's just that uh, after fixing it, when I was test running it, one of the drive belts decided to break. So I have to uh, order a new one in. 
Okay, now that we've replaced the capacitors that are bad, we'll just go through and measure in circuit some of the other ones and just see how they measure up. Because um, if they're measuring good, then we're not going to bother to pull them. So 0.01, that, that's good. 0.08, that's good. There's another one here. This one here, 0.03. Yeah, there's no, there's no issues with that one. 0.17. I think we're okay there too. With the size of that, what is that one? Looking for the, looking for the value of that cat. six that one there might be oh, it's a 470 470 at 25 volts is okay 0 0.32 is what uh, should be considered to be a good one so it's 0 0.17 so we're, we're okay on that one and then there's just one more down here this little guy here 0.18 this is a relatively small one this is uh, 470 at 10 volts 0.18, uh, 0.24 would be considered good for a new one. So that one's okay. So the, the other capacitors in here all all look to be okay that I've tested, and I've replaced the ones that the tops were bulged on, and they were definitely measuring bad. So the next uh, step now is to put this back into the television, and we'll test the TV out and see if it starts up. So we've now got the board put back into the TV. We're just going to mount this down with the mounting screws here. And before we put the back on the set, we'll of course put the stand in it and stand it up so we can test it and make sure that uh, there's nothing else that's wrong with this before we put the back on it and send it on its way. Uh, several of these screws have got grounding tabs on them, as you can see on the outside edge here. They actually ground the circuit board to the chassis, so the screws should be put in snug, but not too tight that you could fracture the board. So then we'll just redo our connectors. Again, the connectors only go in one place and they are keyed. So they can only plug into one connector and they're also the size of them is different. So there's a different number of pins. So we replace our, our five connectors. And as you can see, if I try to put that one on there, I don't know which one does it go on. Okay, obviously it goes on the one that has the same number of pins because there's two connectors side by side. Plug the power in. Now we're just gonna put the base on the set. And stand it okay, up. Okay, we have the TV it. together. We're just gonna plug power into it and hook it up just to regular cable. I've only got analog cable here in my workshop, so I guess if I, I could go and get my, um, one of my wireless high definition test boxes. Turn the TV around, we're just gonna press the power button. I already see that we got a red power light here, so let's just turn the TV on. See what happens. And it should come on any second now. There we go. Oh, look at that. It's fixed. So that's all that went wrong with this LG um, television. I'll put the model number up in the, uh, the comments here, put it on the video. That's an LG, just like the Samsung that I showed in the last video, this one was taking longer and longer and longer to start. It started out where it took a minute to turn on, then it was five minutes to turn on, then it was an hour, and they pressed the button, literally the customer that brought this to me this morning said, uh, yeah, this set, you know, I turn it on in the morning so I could watch the evening news. I think he was probably, uh, exaggerating it just a little bit but you get the drift it was taking longer and longer and longer to turn on we changed uh what six what five capacitors let's see what what did we change in this thing here i forget what we changed in here we changed one two three four we changed five capacitors in the power supply i'll show you the ones that we changed Put the camera in place here okay the capacitors that we changed zoom in Come on, camera. So we changed these two capacitors here. Where are we? That one and that one. 
and we changed these two capacitors down here we also changed the 680 microfarad capacitor up there this one actually tested okay these four here were out of spec and it was obvious because the, the tops were bulging on these right the top was also showing a little bit of a bulge on that 680 so I changed it just as a good measure even though it did measure fine there wasn't um, an issue with it but we changed it anyway just to make sure that uh, there's not going to be an issue with it down the road and now this TV should be good for many more hours of operation so there you go uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, how to fix your LG LCD TV this is a 37 inch um, LG set and again the boards in here get your timing controller get your main signal board get your power supply when you have problems on these sets usually the problem is going to be in the power supply oh and this is an inverter board this board over here this is the inverter board and there's another inverter board on the other side here these boards are for the uh, high voltage uh, for the fluorescent lamps. This is a conventional, not an LED set, this is a conventional uh, LCD that uses fluorescent bulbs to light the screen. So there's two more power supplies and these are the transformers for them. These are inverters uh, that generate and it's, it's several thousand volts so if you got to work in the inverter side be careful because uh, the voltage required to light these cold fat cathode fluorescent um, bulbs is several thousand volts uh, I know that because I've I've taken power supplies from dead uh, sets and I've used the inverters from these sets to power neon tubes and neon tubes need typically three to five thousand volts to light them up and uh, uh, the power supply out of a little 19 inch set the one that I showed um, a month or so ago when I was dissecting that uh, the power supply from that is actually uh, in a neon uh, sign now and it's it's powering up a neon tube that originally had a 5,000 volt transformer that went south so they can put out a lot of power be careful if you got to work in around the high voltage uh, circuitry but um, that's it hope you enjoyed this one and um, stay tuned we'll keep them coming till next time Close this one off, just a little shot. I mean, it's not a high, this is certainly not a high definition feed. This is just off of analog cable that we've got going here. So, um, and this, this customer is using it on a component input, so I had to switch it over to tuner just to make it work. Just because I don't have any component inputs here in my workshop. But uh, no, it's working great. And, uh, and I'll say another one, another one out of my hair.